My name is Michael Luchin, and we're gonna be talking about using Miro for remote work. And joining me remotely today is none other than George Brooks. Um, Michael, I'm, I'm just right here. You are the master of remote work and finding tools and resources to, to help us be better mm. at supporting our remote employees um, and our clients, because a lot of our clients are not in the office with us on a regular basis. Mm. Uh, Miro has been the, the, one of the best tools that we've used yet uh, yeah. for doing that. And also Zoom. Yes. So we've got both Zoom Up and Miro. Talk me through your setup. How do you yes. have this, yes. this whole thing working? Yeah, and so I think one of the first things that you'll notice is that I've got two devices in front of me. I've got both an iPad and also a Mac, and I'm using both of them right now to remotely be connected with you, George, um, as we go through this video. Yeah. And I think the reason why it's important to have this as a consideration when you're just thinking about your remote setup using Miro and Zoom together is having empathy for uh, those of your team that you're, that you're working with first and foremost. So the reason why I do this is because one, it's really easy for me to use Miro's uh, whiteboard feature to just kind of simulate uh, the pencil being like a marker on the whiteboard. Yeah, specifically but, on your iPad. Exactly. Okay. But it also allows me to see the facial reactions of everybody on Zoom. And so I'm able to actually, you know, still read the room while being remote and also interacting with the tools at the same time. So we've done this as well, even if we're in the room and we have everyone in the room is local except for the one person, which oftentimes happens with yeah. somebody like you, Michael, that's the only person that's remote. What we'll even do is have everyone sign in to their own computers, both to Zoom and to Miro. That's right, yeah. Miro. I almost said Mural. Yeah. It's the other tool. Um, into Miro. Yeah. And so that, to the exact same point, that you can see their facial expressions, kind of read their body language to know how they're feeling about the, the session. Yeah. And also be able to collaborate in a shared space that you can see and we can see all together. Yeah. So, kind of diving into some of the specifics of uh, how we actually use Miro remotely. Uh, I think the best way to kind of walk through some of the, the unique aspects of remote work using Miro mm. is walking through a form of our kind of accelerated design sprint. Yeah, Takes great. key aspects of our design sprint process, puts it into one Miro board, and allows us to do things like story spining, inspiration gathering, and more, but collaboratively as a remote team. All right, let's jump into it. Yeah, so if I'm actually on the, we're actually both on the board now, and um, just like the first thing to note is, um, when you actually start on the board as a new user, I've set it up so that you see the entire board. It's like you're walking into a room and it's the, it's the whiteboard that you see and you see everything laid out. Just like we have our lean model canvas and on an actual physical whiteboard in our yeah, HQ office, yeah. the same thing can be set up with Miro. Well, and I think we, we always prep the room, right? For, yeah. Before a session, uh, making sure that it's gonna be ready and, um, make it quick for being able to transition between activities in the room. And that's yeah. exactly what you've done here using their frames, right? So mm -hmm. you've set up a whole um, workspace here for all the different frames that you're gonna be walking through during yeah. this sprint. Yeah. So it, walk us through that. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think before I dive into that too, one of the things as a facilitator who's facilitating something remotely I do is I always make sure to turn on the, the feature that Miro has so I can see people's yeah. mouses move around. Yeah. That way I can make sure that everyone is focused or if someone's looking at something else, Maybe there's a good question to prod them on. Like, hey, why are, why are we still stuck here? Is there something we, we didn't cover that we need to get out onto the board? Totally. So all that being said, like I'll usually um, zoom in to the very first kind of section here where it's our sprint goal and our, our key questions. Um, and this is where I'm gonna ask the team to just start taking out uh, sticky notes and being able to like list out like, you know, what do you think some key questions are? Um, and I cannot spell today, but you get the point. Like this is something that allows us to have a collaborative exercise together, just like as if we were putting up sticky notes as a team on a physical board. Typically what I'll also do is I'll use the timer feature um, that uh, Miro has built in. So I might like set like a five minute timer and yeah, you should have just yeah, seen that pop saw, up on your yeah, screen. Yeah, I actually started to create one, but it, yours took over, it was great. Yep. Yeah, and so this allows us to like keep things on track um, as we move forward through the board. So if we look over, um, skipping over the personas kind of reference column that we've got set up here, if we look over at the story map column itself, um, I've kind of templated out uh, our interpretation of a story map. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, I think um, uh, actually Miro does have some really good starter templates to use, but 
a lot of teams, including ours, have our own unique approach on it. And so this is kind of a good starting point for it. What I've also found through actual, like in-person, but also digital uh, sessions that involve story spining, is that we're going to be um, really looking at like different color sticky notes. There's gonna be things that come up. Technical mm. considerations, UX considerations, being able to have some sort of a legend that can adapt and flex as the session goes on is really important. So beforehand, you've set this up to, to like you said, be a, a legend, and then this stays here, so you don't mess with these things. Yeah. Do people Do people go to this and like copy and paste these, or do they pull from and just kind of mirror the the style? Both. I mean, and that's kind of like the the what's really nice about about Miro is it's just so easy and so intuitive. So you can easily just go and create a new sticky and kind yeah. of mirror it along your own. Match the color, match the size, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But there's also a lot of keyboard shortcuts that folks will use as well. So they'll like duplicate things and quickly like in almost like a bulk mode like contribute to the board in real time. Yeah. Great. So also on top on top of that too, like this is the starting point of the board. Mm. And I think one of the things that's incredibly beautiful about Miro and its infinite canvas and all of its tools is that it can really be incredibly organic as you're facilitating either in this case a design sprint yeah. or an entirely different exercise. Just like you would have a space off to the side of the, the marker board where you're doing all the work and you can like throw stickies in a parking lot or in a space over here or right. I just need to brainstorm in front of me, I can do that here. Yeah, yeah. And so some of the things that we found as a team is like, we'll start off with a template and we'll start going through that, but really that becomes a guideline over time. Mm. And, and what's nice is like, people might start adding things of their own. You're like, you know what, that's actually a great idea. Let's go ahead and take a pause real quick and then like kind of pivot the use of this board in real time so that, like real time board. Oh, such a better name. So that we can actually get towards the outcomes that we want using this, this tool and this remote process. Yeah, it's great. Um, so yeah, there's like all sorts of other um, aspects of this board. Um, you know, we've, we're able to line out our ice box and move stickies down there as we want. Um, but I think one of the things that's really cool I want to look at is kind of this um, uh, solution research box here. Yeah. So this is kind of like finding inspiration. Um, and this is really cool um, when it comes to using Miro as Okay, a tool. I haven't done this with you, so I'm excited. You, you seem really excited about this. So walk me through it. Yeah, so, so basically solution research is kind of like when you're finding like ideas is like, okay, what is some like design inspiration that we want to yeah. use when we're, yeah. when we're thinking about solving the problem that we've defined above? Um, and this is where, and we set a timer, but the team is able to go out and take screenshots of websites, um, take pictures of things, uh, take screenshots on their phones, and then go in here and use uh, the uploading tool on Miro to actually add it to that board. And what's nice about this is like, because it's a digital tool, you can add photos and you can add screenshots, and all sorts of even websites if you want. Um, you can, the, the, the type of content that you can add here for everyone to see, is, is really limitless um, and it's really fast too. It doesn't involve having to print things off and then tape them up to a physical board. This is an exercise that can be done really quickly. I love it. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to drop one, something in here real quick just to, to kind of see. I mean, it's as simple as just drag and dropping off your desktop. Yeah. Um, or, or if you're using the, um, the iPad app, you can upload. Uh, yeah, and there it is. I just saw it pop right up. And so what's really cool about this too is um, if you add like I'm just gonna, for, for demo, demonstration purposes, just drop a sticky in here. But basically what you can do is you can also add a voting session. And so like maybe you wanna vote on inspiration oh, as a really team. This is really cool. I love this feature. We've used this several times, it's really cool. Right, right. And it's, it's so cool because you can actually like change the voting area. Um, so right now it's the whole board. You can change the objects and whatnot. But you can go ahead and like say like, all right, we each get like one vote and we can go ahead and start voting and um, once, once you're, I mean, yeah. So actually, go ahead and uh, vote on something. So let me pull up my vote. So I have to join the vote here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, yep, yeah, I wanna vote too. Um, I have one vote to cast. So let's let's zoom into that area that we're just in. And, I, it, it, and it does force me to kind of pick an object, which is nice, because then you don't like, yeah, votes don't yeah. get lost someplace. So I'm gonna vote for that image. Yep. And then I'll say that I'm done. Cool, and I'm done too. And now I'm gonna go ahead and end voting for all. It's going to process the results, but basically when it, when it actually finishes it, there you go. So it's going to show the tally. It looks like we're in alignment, so we yeah, can move good. on from yep. solution research. But it's a really great way. It's really super flexible, and also it's completely anonymous, which allows you to have a lot of value um, 
in terms of the, the voting aspect of, of these exercises. And in a traditional design sprint, you would do sticky dot voting, which again is semi-anonymous. This is even more anonymous because you really don't know who's voting yeah. because you can't see each other because you're remote, yeah. uh, which I think is really nice. You don't see who's getting up to go to the board or anything like that. Yeah, that's a big factor for us, making sure there's no one like just because the leader votes on that thing doesn't mean that everyone else needs to. You really get a, a non-biased opinion. Yeah. Now, now diving into the next box, I think this is the most fun, solution sketches. I'm not gonna lie, the first time that I was facilitating a remote design sprint using Miro, I had a lot of anxiety around this. Are people gonna figure out how to either sketch something that relatively resembles something um, using like their trackpads, for example, on Miro? Are they gonna be able to get physical sketches on a, as a photo like up into the board appropriately. But Miro has like such an incredible user experience and it's incredibly intuitive that it's been able to work relatively seamlessly. I don't know if you've had any I haven't done this as much. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see. So, I mean, maybe we could just experiment a little bit. Um, if you were to, like, let's say our mission is to just draw a homepage of a website. Yep. Um, how would you, how would you kind of set the expectations for what we need to go do there. Typically this would be done as an exercise, I think to start, it would be typically done as like the way we did the kind of the, the inspiration gathering. Yeah. Um, so you set a timer, people have like five, 10 minutes to, to do whatever they want. Um, but with, in this case, like we can actually, if we're designing a website homepage, you can actually use the wireframes feature oh, yeah. of Miro and pull in um, templates to use and actually, um, and again, Start. because it's infinite, I can make it, it looks kind of small, but then I zoom in on it and it actually becomes like a full yeah. browser, even just for me, even though I'm still small next to your big one. Yeah, and you can yeah. actually like resize it too. Cool. Um, and, and what's nice about this is um, because of the uh, actual like kind of whiteboard capabilities, I can actually go in here on my iPad and just start like, you know, sketching out like, all right, this is gonna be our header. Um, we're gonna have a column over here. Um, and like an image over here, super low fidelity, just like it should be in these types of exercises. Um, but but Miro really allows it to happen. And it looks like George, you've actually have found some more kind of I clean love, ways to do it. Quickly. Yeah, I mean the wireframing tools actually have some of these things here built in, so I can actually grab, um, you know, I grab an object and then come back in and say, let's let's say I really want to be able to tell a quick story. Um, I know there's going to be some more images here across this display and we want to have three options oh, that's awesome. um, that that actually can give you a little bit more clean story i'm traditionally i'm not a big uh proponent or, or fan of wireframing but for this type of like very rapid very quick sketching yep um a tool like that helps to speed up the process especially if you're not comfortable drawing yeah um, yeah, yeah. And, and you know sometimes too people may not necessarily be as comfortable doing digital drawing but they may be more comfortable with sketching on actual paper yeah and what's nice about that and what we've used in the past is just uh miro also has a uh, mobile app as well and you can just cool. sketch something on a on a whiteboard or on paper and then you can just take a picture of it and upload it instantly to the board um, like any other object on your own. Ah, it's fantastic. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then of course at the end, um, to, to generate alignment quickly, you can use the voting feature again. So all that being said, like those are some of the, like, the key areas that have been really useful for this. Again, um, I think one of the biggest benefits of facilitating something like this remotely is one, being able to see everyone mm -hmm. over Zoom um, and see those facial expressions because that way you can figure out like what is the vibe of the room, even yeah. though the room may be distributed across multiple states or even countries. And on top of that too, like being able to have another tool or another way so that way you can interact from a facilitator's perspective yep. and really drive things forward. Um, but again, like at the end of the day, I think one of the, one of the things that really helps so much about Miro is it's incredible user experience allows you to seamlessly like and organically uh, kind of evolve how you're approaching this remote facilitation on the fly. Um, and just kind of use the board for whatever purpose it, it needs to be used for at that time. So a couple tips that I would give, or at least experiences that we've had, and I think that you've kind of naturally done this, and you maybe have already touched on it, but um, one thing is that if you do have a lot of people that are gonna be participating, make sure that they're all logged in to the board separately. Yes. Um, that helps a lot. We've tried it where we've kind of kept in the room, we've kept it up on the, the screen, mm -hmm. and then only the remote person. It just doesn't give as collaborative an experience as if everybody just logs into it. Right. If your internet can handle it, which most places can now, um, go ahead and ever, have everybody 
even yeah. if you're all in the room together, um, log in remotely. Yeah. And we've actually seen that even when we're not doing remote work, we'll have sessions where we'll come together and maybe there isn't a whiteboard in the space and we'll just say, you know what, no worries. Everybody log into a Miro um, board. We're gonna do all this work here. Mm. And, and and we still kind of get out of the space and we come back in and back out. But that isn't always just because somebody's remote. We just think it's a great tool for that session. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think I think just the, the lifespan of this as a tool beyond that initial session yeah. is a huge value add. Um, so like in uh, one case I had, we did a design sprint, but then we realized like after the design sprint, but before things were final enough to get into like our development tool, yeah. we're like, oh, we have to, we want to add some more, more things to that or go back and reference some things, but not in a static way, in a collaborative way, using the commenting system that Miro has to be able to at reference like if you're a developer and you want to at reference another developer to get their thoughts, you can do that um, and just use it as an ongoing collaborative tool beyond the life of a single session. So there's more to come maybe on that. There is a bunch of features that uh, Miro continues to add to this incredible tool. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty rare. I mean, you and I have been working together for a long time mm -hmm. on trying to find, we're tool nerds, right? Yeah. We love our technology. We love that it helps us to be more efficient yep. and to be able to collaborate better together. Um, and there has been those tools over the years that have kind of been like the highlights, like the Asanas of the world, or even Jira mm. now with their new designs. Yeah. Um, and this is one that I think has been kind of a, a surprise and delight. Like all of a sudden it showed up juxtaposed to some of the other tools we were using for similar things. Yep. And it just has really been able to change the way we collaborate, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. You know, sometimes we give their, their rebrand from real time board, which really summarized what it is yeah. uh, to mirror a little bit of flack. It is I, only four letters, which is easy. It fits better in the top left. Yeah. But I, but I think like that kind of also, um, aligns with some of the new features that have been coming out recently yeah. and kind of the vision of maybe where the company is taking this tool, which is, it's, it is a whiteboarding tool, but it's way more than that. Like you can do so much mm. work on a whiteboard that is as well designed and as performant as this tool is um, and get so much done. Like I'm really excited to kind of see how this evolves and how uh, remote work evolves with it. So one of the big missions and actually one of our, our um, yearly goals this year is to become really great at remote work. Um, these types of tools become really, really, really helpful. And yeah. oh, by the way, most of our clients are not in our backyard. Yeah. Um, and so the reality is, is we can use technology like this to serve them and to serve each other really, really well. Yeah, yeah. And just, just by proxy of using this technology now for some time, what I've learned is that uh, tools like this allow you to get and achieve the results, um, if not better than doing it in person. Yeah. And, it, and it's incredible uh, to see that. Now, I, I believe that, you know, maybe even using a tool like this in person is going to be better than using it remotely because we're all human at the end of the day. Yeah. But it's incredible the tools like that Miro and others and Zoom have enabled like this type of empowerment for teams to be distributed, achieve results and just really push forward um, with whatever they're trying to do and achieve. So if you're using any other tools like Miro or Zoom or Slack or those types of things to support your remote teams or your remote clients, let us know in the comments yeah. below. Uh, we'd love to check those out. Like I said, we're, we're, we're tool nerds and so we're always wanting to learn the next thing. Um, but as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Cheers. Cheers. It's really cold coffee. Taking it for the team. Oh. <laughs>